We've done thousands of installation videos here at CJ Pony Parts. We've even become known as kind of the go-to place for detailed installs for all of your Mustang needs. We realized that over the years, as much as we've installed these parts, we've really never explained exactly how some of them work. So in today's Tech Talk, we're gonna take a look at sway bars and explain exactly what they do for your vehicle. Before we get into the sway bar itself, we're going to talk about what its job is, and that is to basically work against body roll. Now, what's body roll? When you take your vehicle and you go into a corner, the body is going to roll this way. You'll notice if you're making a left turn, your body goes this way in the car. If you're making a right, it goes this way. Well, it's the same thing. Basically, it's going like this. And it's putting pressure on that outside tire and lifting up the inside tire. Now, the more body roll you get, the more chance this tire is actually can even lose traction and it puts a lot of strain on the outside of the car, which can make the tire roll over. Well, this way bar's job is basically to eliminate body roll and explain how it does that. Now, this is a front sway bar off an S197 Mustang, but basically this is a good indication of what a generic sway bar is gonna look like. A sway bar is gonna be a U-shaped steel bar. What this is gonna do is connect to the suspension near the wheels. And when you get that body roll, what this actually does is work as a torsion spring and it's gonna twist. So let, instead of letting that car completely roll over like we were showing you before, this will actually twist. It'll keep the body flatter and put more pressure on that outside tire, which can increase traction. Also getting into that body roll will make the car handle a lot more neutral and overall a lot better. Now most of your modern vehicles, you're gonna find sway bars on both the front and rear of the car. Now there's certain applications where you won't want that and we'll get to that in a couple minutes, but basically this is gonna attach in different ways. The most common way is gonna be some end links. Now on the Mustang, this is gonna attach basically to the chassis. These will attach to the control arms and they'll connect the sway bar. So again, when you hit a corner, when the control arm basically rises, it'll make the sway bar twist and that'll keep the body rolled down and keep traction up. There's two things you're gonna look at when picking out a sway bar for your vehicle. The diameter of the sway bar and the material being used for the construction, whether it's a solid or a hollow bar. Now I'll start with a solid bar and the benefits of a solid bar. Well, first of all, it's solid, so it's gonna be a lot stronger than your hollow bar. So if you have a 30 millimeter solid bar, it's a pretty common bar for the front of vehicles. Now, if you have a hollow bar, the benefit of the hollow bar is gonna be weight. If you have a 30 millimeter hollow bar, it's gonna be about 40% lighter than your solid bar, but it won't be as rigid. Now, there's a whole huge math you can do to figure out the actual rigidity of the bars. I'm not gonna get into that. But basically, a hollow bar has to be about three to four millimeters larger than your solid bar for the same rigidity. Now, again, the benefit is lightweight. So if you're building a full out race car and every ounce counts, it's unsprung weight. So getting a light bar will definitely help. But for most street car applications, for most use, the solid bar is gonna be the way to go. And you're shopping for sway bars, do you need a both front and rear sway bar? It's gonna depend on your application. You know, for a drag car like Crimstang behind us here, you don't want a front sway bar because you want that weight to lift and you want the weight to transfer to the rear. Also for your drag car, you're gonna have a much heavier rear bar, more of an anti-roll bar. Basically what you're doing is the body roll in a drag car is happening on the launch. When that car lifts, the car will tend to twist. The anti-roll bar is gonna straighten that out, make for much more consistent 60 foot times. Now, if you're talking about a road race car, autocross car, or even your street car, yes, then there's definitely a benefit of having front and rear sway bars so you can keep the car a lot more neutral in the corners. Now, there is a thought process of saying, you know, on the rear, if you run a really, really heavy spring, you don't need the sway bar because the spring will stop the body roll from side to side, which is absolutely true. But the spring rate you'd have to run on a setup like that is gonna be so stiff that the ride quality is gonna absolutely suffer. So definitely for your street car, let the anti-roll bar do its job, use a softer spring for a much better ride. The other thing we wanna talk about before we get into the diameters of sway bar is gonna be end links. You know, end links are important. We sell stock style end links, we sell adjustable end links. When do you need an adjustable end link? You don't need anything adjustable until you change your car's ride height. And the reason being is the sway bar, you want it set up neutral on your car. And what does neutral mean? It means the sway bar is parallel to the ground with the car on the ground and all the weight on the car. So if it's parallel, they have what's called zero preload, which means there's no strain at all on these and the spring is not doing anything. That's the way you want your car set up. Now the problem is if you're running a stock length end link and you lower the car too much, now all of a sudden that bar is not gonna be parallel anymore. It's gonna end up going downward and it's gonna create preload. 
Preload can make the car handle all kinds of funky because basically this sway bar here already has tension on it, so it can make the car do goofy things in corners. So if you do lower your car, you want to get an adjustable set of end links. These will allow you to get the bar back to parallel to the ground with no preload, which is going to be much better for neutral handling. So we mentioned that again, for most of your street car applications, you'll want a front and rear bar. Now, what size do you need? Here is where I would trust the manufacturers. Now, if you like math, this is a white line bar. White line has an excellent article online that has all the math as far as picking out a sway bar based on you know, your vehicle spring rate, your weight of your vehicle, your application. If you really like the math, by all means, check out their article. But the basics, trust the manufacturers. You know, they know the size of your Mustang. They know the weight of your Mustang. The bars they're gonna produce for these cars are gonna be the proper diameter. If you have too thick of a bar, it's not gonna twist like it's supposed to, and it'll make it actually worse, because instead of getting the body roll now, you'll actually get too much pressure on that side tire, and it'll make it slide. And again, if it's too small, it'll spin too easily, and it's not gonna do its job. So again, here, trust the manufacturers. We have a ton of great sway bars here at CJ Pony Parts for all of your Mustang, Focus, and Fiesta needs.